first time I see ya, we are one thing more tell you Turn the lights on, are you ready now? Pretty cute face in my place, me not send you home Holy heap a girl, but me think about you all one day Put it with you on the wrist, real bright on them Yo, what's good? It's the big, 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 The biggest show in the game. And so, you know, we out here in the tropics. And so I seen this dude today. I said, my brother, Mama Silvers was good. I said, my brother, how's my tan? He said, man, you ain't got no real tan. I went out there and really sat in the sun all day. I'd be damned to be on a vacation for two weeks and not have no suntan. But what's good, y'all? Reporting from paradise, literally. You know what I'm saying? And so, new music, we back outside. It'll be out like by next week where you can just download it or whatever. You know, I, I, I jumped the gun and, uh, and threw it out there for July 4th just so the barbecues or the DJs can have something, just a vibe, you know, just that ignorance. Shout out to my sister Mary J. Blige. I saw the documentary this week. Really, really, really dope. Uh, based on my life, well, her life, you know, but my life, my life, you know, that LP, that's amazing uh, to see that. You know, I got a special guest tonight. <laughs> I got a special guest tonight. And so, <laughs> let's see the quest. Because, boy, we've been talking behind the scenes. And so, oh, yeah, it's a different, look, look. Let's keep it real. In New York, you can't really catch that tan. You know what I mean, that tan, the tan. It got like a fake sun. I ain't gonna lie, it could get hot in New York. But the real sun, that tropical. So for years I've been coming to the tropics or maybe even Miami to get that real sun. And then I just show up at the Ruck or something with that. You already know it's tropical. It's a different type of excellence. You know, it's a show off. Yeah, yo, Amari, what's up, my brother? Shout out to Amari Hardwick, friend of the show. My brother, he was here with us like last month. If you want his nickname, that's Ghost from Power. He tuned the fuck in. You know what I'm saying? Only the big boys tuned in. And where else can we have such a uh, happy meeting? Two days ago, I was on the show. I told you, yo, we got billionaires that watch this. And out of nowhere, a Billy pops up. Yo, Joe, what's up? I'm like, yo! Like, it's so... God bless you, my brother Amari. Nothing but love. And so it's like, it's the only show where we got people sitting on a milk crate outside of Bodega right now. And then we got guys who own yachts and skyscrapers. We got the most famous guys in the world, it's like Amari, Ghost and Power tuned in. They checking in now. You know, consistency is key. Consistency is key. Shout out to the Boricuas in the house. It's so crazy. Let me check on my brother right now. Hold up. And so it's crazy. So I put out a little uh, a little joint with my sister, Barbecue Anthem. You know what I'm saying? I put out that Barbecue Anthem. And boy, that was lighting up the airwaves yesterday. And I tell you, I got a mixtape coming. I don't really put out mixtapes, but I want to give y'all something for the free. Something you can enjoy, some Fat Joe. And I'm talking about quality, not just mixtape shit. Shit that sound like a, a platinum album. When you put it in your car and you stream it in your car, shit sound like a platinum album, but it's a mixtape. Because all we do is big boy shit. I ain't going to lie to you. That song we just threw out, me and my sister did it just to get the, the barbecues going. 
But the feedback, everybody calling me back, yo, you don't miss, yo, oh my God, another one, a smash, oh my God. And it's like, that's all I know how to do is make big boy music. And so, um, that's what it is. It was amazing this weekend, uh, July the 4th weekend. Um, I had a great time. You know, what, 25 years ago? I got shot on July the 4th at a family bar. Yo, Musa, I got shot at a July the 4th. Um, on July the 4th, maybe 25 years ago or something, God was a coward. And so that's why I teach you don't bully nobody because I used to bully this guy. And one day he was standing there with a gun. And so, but July the 4th for years, I ain't really like vibing, taking those shows, not going out like that. Now I just totally go safe. So I get rid of, on July the 4th, I get lost. I go somewhere tropic where me and a pelican might have a one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I'm saying? So that, that you know, and, and it eliminates, you know, unfortunately I seen some shit. I don't know how true it is. I think 50 Cent posted it. He said about 150 people died over the weekend, um, July the 4th weekend. Shit crazy. We got white supremacists marching in Philly. I mean, I'm trying to get to the front. We can talk serious shit because it's a lot of serious shit going on. But I'm trying to get to the front. I'm hoping my man is supposed to come on. I heard a rumor that he's so cracked. I said, don't believe for that. And so... Yeah, it's crazy. And so, let me see if he comes. Yeah, I got to see them videos of Philly. You know, Philly, one of the realest places in the world. But I want to see the videos of them running them out. Because uh, the one CNN keeps showing is them trooping through the streets, acting like they could do that. You know, I've always thought like metropolitan areas like a Philly, a Detroit, a New York, a New Jersey, they couldn't get away with that. You know, and so, um, I'm very okay. And so, tell Avi what's up with Steve Julius. And so, with me, you know, random thoughts today was a deep, deep day. Um, Thinking about July the 4th, thinking about America, thinking about uh, some shit that, that uh, just life, man. You know what I'm saying? And so COVID made a lot of people sit down. And so for me, I sat down and started doing a lot of history a lot of knowledge a lot of uh, a, a lot of knowledge itself figuring it out and i guess the whole america has so you got you got white people some white people some is the key some white people that feel like they're losing america the power in america right that's some guys you see marching down philly that's them guys you see July 6th. That's these guys. And and so now you got black people and Spanish people's eyes. First of all, let me, let me, I, I should put a, a thing called these are my views. And this is what I'm looking at. And this is what I'm seeing. And uh, I'm not God. What I say doesn't matter for everybody. I'm just giving you my opinion. If y'all want to have some real talk, put fire signs. If y'all want to have some real talk, uh, my brother Crazy Legs said they're scared of the browning of America. If y'all want to have real talk, put it up.
otherwise. But I'm not telling you how to live your life. I'm not telling you what I say isn't everything, right? What I'm telling you isn't how you live your life or what you're supposed to do. I have an opinion. This is a talk show. You tune in. I do not force you to come on here. And, and so I give you my opinion. I know that every day I come on here for a year and a half, I'm bound to step on shit. I'm bound to offend certain people. I'm bound to, it, it's, it's just no way around it if I'm talking about real shit. And so it's a very scary time in America. It's a very scary time in America. And and so, like I tell you, there's some white people because I have white people that I love to death. I want y'all to hear my words and really hear it and understand it with substance. So to Slim, what's up? It's my little man was locked up with us, man, in the feds. Um, and so, so you have these white people, the white supremacists, who are marching in Philly yesterday, who are doing the insurrection July 6th. Um, and they feel like America's being taken care, taken away from them. And uh, that's their position. Now, because of the knowledge that we've received during the COVID that we learned as black and brown people about systemic racism, Meaning in reality, with reality, if you're a black woman and you own a home, uh, it might be worth $8 million. Let's just say, just to say $8 million, a white guy got the same house is worth $15 million. Record labels, they, 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 they value, let's say you two and Bono and these guys catalog more than they do. James Brown, or Ray Charles. It's a fact. And so, unfortunately, we come from Superman from VIP room. What's up, man? And um, we come from a horrible past that we, as black and brown people, have tried to ignore and accept America the Beautiful. One united America. When Barack Obama was first elected, we thought we were moving in the right direction. But you got to understand, some things that make you laugh be the same things that make you cry. So when we showed the world that we could vote for a black man, some people who felt different about that got in their feelings. And so that's how we got the birth of Donald Trump and the shit he's doing, right? Now, talk is cheap. Some people say words are powerful. Uh, but some people, you know, you pick up Fox, they're talking about America's over, the black, pe the black people and the Spanish people are taking over. You pick up CNN, they saying, you know, the white people are racist, we got to this. And so everybody's making their money talking some shit some way but not realizing that some people are really eating up these words. In Boston, they found 12 black brothers and Latino brothers with machine guns on the side of the highway. I do not know what they were doing. Okay, but I do know uh, they had machine guns and army fatigue with a flag saying this is our country in the country. Listen guys. And so I would love to know what happened with, with what they these guys was on their way doing, right? And so it's on both sides. So 
as you keep getting the knowledge and the education, it gets ugly because ideologies, and it happens with religion. You got a guy who becomes so Catholic that he wants to go blow up uh, an abortion clinic. I know some Muslims, they're the most peaceful people in the world. In fact, when I'm with Muslim people, if I came with 10 bucks, I leave back with 12. They will not let me pay. These are the sweetest people in the world. Then you got some guys who took it too far and they become radicalized. And so this is my fear with us as black and brown people to where, yeah, we got to be woke. We got to know what's going on. But we might be getting too radicalized where we're not looking at people as just humans and who they are. If you're looking at everything racist and with, uh, yo, they, 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 this is racist, this is this and this and that. For one, you won't allow yourself to enjoy yourself In life, if everything we look at is we look at is yo, this is racist, and we looking at it's racist, you can't even enjoy yourself, and then you become radicalized to where you're looking at everything with, and just and this shit is crazy, right? And so everybody's in their feelings because now everybody's woke, and sometimes even Fat Joe, I look at Twitter, even though Twitter's a liar, Twitter's a liar, these people lie. Everything, I be, keep telling you this all the time because these people really don't even exist. They're internet guys that try to cancel the planet Earth. They're liars, right? But when I look at Twitter and they be like, you know, Fat Joe's a white man. I know I got a suntan. This ain't my normal cut. But Fat Joe's a white man and he's appropriations. It's, bro, do you know where the fuck I grew up? Do you know I've been singing We Shall Overcome since I was three years old? Like, these people got me fucked up. And so, but sometimes you get too radicalized to where you're looking at everything through one lens. And that's horrible. And you don't allow yourself to enjoy life and so it's a terrible time in america and it's sad that everything we do got to go back to you know racism that that's pretty much what's happening right now that everybody's turning everything that happens into racism. Everything that everything that happens is turning into racism. And what's crazy is because you know jealousy's uh you know I have a problem, right? My problem is I have a, a hood problem you know, for some hood guys, right? And so if you're from the hood and you say, yo, we keep it real. I never told, I'm not a rat. I got morals, I got principles. And then, so, and then you got brothers that unfortunately, and these are the brothers that to this day I big up. Now let's be clear, I'm on another level. This is obvious to see. And most guys like me, do you think they care about what these people say in the hood? No. Do you think Jay-Z cares one time to think of what homeboy's saying in the hood? No. Right? But Joe, you know, every now and then, because I'm a human being, um, divide and conquer. Is, is a perfect word for what I'm looking for. 
right? And that's been going on between Latinos and blacks forever. The whole, I bet you if we go to the root of the jail system, inside the jail system where the thinking is, look, in the jails is Latinos stick with Latinos, blacks stick with blacks, white sticks with white. Fat Joe can change that. Nobody could change that. So if you did 20 years in jail, you only know racism because it was, it, it's your forced. Even if you're a cool black dude, they like to be with Spanish and Spanish and that. They fuck that up for you. They make it racist. That's a whole nother world. Then you come back out and you're like, damn, yo, can I be cool with this fat guy? I, this Spanish guy? I don't think he's really, you know, because they systemically, I can't blame you. You was in a jail where it was based off of race. And so that's a problem, right? And then we ask you to adapt and come back and embrace your Latino and black brothers and your white brothers. And that's hard. No, we can't abandon history. I'm not saying that. I'm with you on history. I'm telling you, stay woke. Well, China has become the most pop. Well, it might be, or it's become one most powerful country because they rule by the iron fist. You say some shit, they cut your fingers off. They, this country's like that. What's my man they killed out there, Gaddafi? He had that shit on lock. Wasn't nobody getting out of line. They killed him, but he ruled with an iron fist. I'm not calling him a good guy at all. But he was killing shit. And they know you step out of line, he's killing you, right? But when he died, that's when you seen the spring rising and everybody turning into terrorists or killing each other or whatever the case may be. Sometimes Nick, people need a heavy hand. And so, that's what I'm saying. Oh shit, hold up, hold up, hold up. The man, not the myth, I think he's here. Hold up, I fucked up. I fucked up. Hold up. Yo, King. I kept sending you the, the uh request, but I, I don't know, man. It wasn't getting through. I don't know what happened, man. So I got into talking some shit. Hey, yo, Keith, man, you've been around a long time, my brother. I love you. I don't want to talk about no serious shit with you because I know you're about the ladies, the uh, <laughs> baby making music. But it's really crazy what's going on in America with racism and shit. And, and, and it's always been here, Keith, but uh, do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's always been here. You know, uh, you know, it's always been here. Sad that. It, 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 it's like it is, and it, it, and it's been like that for for a while. But it's always been. I mean, it's funny because, like you and myself, even though it's been here, we've just and, and this is sad. We've just learned how to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? You 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 move through life, and you know it's there. So we, we did. Let me, let me take it inside, Keith, because for some reason, maybe the, the wind or something. I want to get you clear. Right. Uh, hold up. Open the door. Open the door. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah, but, but yo, Keith, what I'm saying is, it's crazy. You tell me to lower this music right here, my please. Um, It's crazy. Could you tell them, my? Whoever. Yo. Yo, Keith. You see Keith Sweat, man. You know how I don't play that shit, Courtney. I book my own songs, Courtney. You see how that Keith Sweat, the biggest in the game, right out the verses. <laughs> yo, 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 can we lower that, my brother, please? Like completely. Yo, Sweat. Yo. DJ Khaled know already he gotta put you on the song. He's sitting right over there. He know what he gotta do. I tell him. Right? <laughs> yeah, listen. I, listen, I'm the light skinned Keith Sweat. I'm the light skinned Keith Sweat. <laughs> I'm the light skin Keith Boy, Sweat. Hey. I'm the light. Yo, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Keith, man. Yo, Keith, man. You came out with that right there. I mean, you smashed the game, man. Oh, no. Nah, I mean, 
like like I was just fun, man. Bob is man and like for real, for real. Like I'ma just put it to you just like this, man. When it comes to King's R and B, he is the King of R and B. And I say and and the reason I say this is because of this, right? You talk- it's looking blurry, Keith. It's looking uh-huh. blurry. You was looking sexy a second ago, you know. All right. Am I good again? Almost, man. There you go. There you go. Hey, so you know, when it comes to kings of R and B and things along that line, it it, it 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 it's just not music, right? It it is is he he was he's a trendsetter. He changed the he changed the game of R and B. He changed how people looked at R and B when he came out. It was like, yo, this is what R and B is now. So he changed the game how how other artists came out and thought. Back in the day, I wouldn't even want to be on the same stage as Bobby Brown because it, it was like, for me, it would have been, man, I got to go up against this dude right here. So, like I said, you know, it was a, he had the mixture of hip-hop, the bad boy, the, the swag, the, the fashion, the, the, you know, the hair. This guy was crashing his Benzes, giving the people the keys. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, keep that. So when, when when you look at all that, you know, it's like when you look at all that, you got to say, you know, it's not just about the music. It's about how influential you were when you came out. You know, he had us wanting to do the him. You know what I'm saying? He was influential with, with, with everybody wanted to be. Everybody wanted to talk. He gave new addition that Ed, that they needed to, to on, 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 the, on the street side. They were the, Nice kids, and he gave them message as a yo, this that you need or beat you. You know what I mean? Or, 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 so basically, know that you know when I'm on stage with them, you know, uh, uh, to be honest with you and with everybody, uh, and I understand this. I'm honored because he was out before me, and, and back in the day, I had a hit record. You know, I never met him the same stage. I, it was. You know, you know how when when we just start do music and we make it better, you know, so that we admire uh, uh, or, or feel good about the heck one day maybe I'll be like that. You know, I didn't think that that I was going to change the stage of a new Bobby Brown and those type of people. Right? So for me, for me to be up there doing a verse with competition with my song to get this song was, a, but to me it was. Different. Still be brown, you know what I'm saying? So then, but you knew your your sweat. You knew maybe other people didn't know unless you're a big Keith Sweat fan like me and my wife. But like you have huge core fans, but you knew you knew you could take them song for song. You knew it. You knew it in your own head. The people I don't think necessarily people knew Keith Sweat could go toe to toe with Bobby because he was everything you said. Right. He's the king. He got Whitney. He gets in trouble. He's this. He's Ghostbusters. So all we know about Bobby is he's the king. It's un. It's, nobody can test him. Right, right. And so you go up there, and so it starts, and people thinking, damn, keep. I mean, damn, man, keep cock diesel, but he got a problem right now with Bobby right now. And then when they start going toe to toe, and then when he come to you, and he played a new edition. That's that's when all rules broke out the head. They said, oh, I'm going to show you my pen game. Let's chill. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, you know, me and Bob is family. And like, like to me, but the crazy part, and for those that don't know, the crazy part about it, we changed that, you know, we had to, uh, it was a 24 to 36 hour turnaround. Mm. We didn't even know it was going down. Like Monday, the beginning of this week, the week, we didn't even know it was going to happen. Tuesday, we didn't know it was going to happen. I happened to be in L.A. shooting a a, a series, you know, Marcus Houston, right? And uh, when I'm on set, I get the call like, yo, it's going down. I'm like, what's going down? I say, yo, how that happened? You know, we've been talking about this for weeks and, Ain't no contract line. Ain't no 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 eyes are dotted, keys across, or whatever. We signed the contract now. Really, it's going down right there. 
So, to all, I mean, just just the fact that we had to get songs together in 24 hours. We had to get fashion together in 24 hours. We had to get haircuts in tw within 24 hours. We had to figure out who the DJ was going to be within 24 hours. We had to do go on and do interviews within 24 hours. So there was a lot of prep that went. Even Man, it was the last last minute. We would have never, uh, never would have believed that. You know, I was chilling with Johnny Gill. I was in L.A. Right, right, right. And he never told me, "Yo, Joe, there's gonna be a versus Keith." And then, so that's why I, I know for a fact it just happened like that. It happened like that. We Shout out to Grand Pooba, Grand Pooba on the check and living legend. Yo, yo. Yeah, it happened like that. We didn't even know it was going to happen. You know, I didn't think, because we, like I said, we talked about it, talked about it, talked about it, talked about it, and talked about it. You know how long we've been talking about doing this? We've been talking about doing this for months. But, you know, Keith, let me tell you something. To, 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 your, to, to who you are and your brand, COVID, while everybody was on the couch eating food, I would FaceTime you and you on the treadmill. <laughs> everybody got white hair. Your shit's still black. You shit still look, yo, Keith, you take this shit serious. The, nah, the I, brand of Keith Sweat being fly, being, I mean, you take it serious, Keith. I, I, I mean, they, you know, you know, if you, uh, if you, if you, if you're ready, you don't have to get ready. You understand what I'm saying? If ready, you don't have to get ready. Be ready so you don't have to get ready. You know what I'm saying? So, so my attitude is like, I understand that this is my that what I do, what I'm blessed to do. I, I've been blessed with. Um, so my attitude is like, I don't or anybody that's a fan, I don't want to cheat them out of anyone who to see me before. So it's my job to make sure that I'm on me in the thing. So, you know, Keith, whenever I see you perform, I act like it's the last show I'm ever going to see. I swear it for years. <laughs> I've been going to your show for but, so many years, and I enjoy it like it's the last show I'm ever going to see. I don't know why. You're one of the very few artists that I just feel like, yo, I want to enjoy this shit. And I go in there, and, and I rock out with you as a fan. And that's how we did it the other night. We went to right. We can't believe, I tell you from a fan perspective, we can't believe, yeah, this Keith Sweat, that's Bobby Brown, they're about to go do this versus shit about to get crazy. And and uh man, I thank you for giving us fans that moment because that it, it was just a huge moment for us. Like as fans, we was like, wow, this shit is really happening. And I gotta applaud Tim and Swiss for uh, creating that space where we can celebrate music and we can see our legends, you know, go at it the right way with the right look, with the right everything. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was just something amazing to see, Keith. Right. And I, and I, and I definitely want to You know, like I said, I ain't thinking, you know, but to have for me to be able to, to, to show what I do. You know, it was funny because people said I was tipping. If you know me, you know, and people that don't know me, they don't know. On stage, I enjoy like telling jokes on stage. That's what I do. So if for those that never have seen me on live, I just like, you know, I, like people, that, people, my friends say, yo, man, sick. That boy. Man, that boy got a problem. You know what I'm saying? So, no, nah, but you funny, though, Keith. Every time I've been around with you, every time I spoke to you, you know, the other day when you called me right after the verses, the next day you said, I'm the light skin Keith Sweat. I'm the light skin Keith Sweat. I'm the light. Yo, yo, Keith, you love this shit, man. Yo, yo so, so how's mean, the game been to you? The game's been good to you, huh, yeah, Keith? Yeah, it's been good to me. I've been blessed, man. And, uh, and you know, a lot of people can't say that, you know what I'm saying? I cannot say the game has been good to me. Uh, it's crazy because you know how you get into something and you don't know how long it's going to last. 
You know, I got in this game just wanting to do, you know, it's funny. I got in this game just trying to do a, a record for girls to love me. You know what I'm saying? One record. I didn't, need, I didn't care about doing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it just, you know, at that, it just blew up from that point. So, in, uh, I need to be in the game as long as I've been in the game because you know, most people don't have a chance to be in something they love. You know what I'm saying? Be successful at it this long. I mean, that's not just. You know, I, I have to say thank you I did to all my fans out there because real talk. It ain't even about it because without them supporting, you know, uh, uh, loving us and you know, really embracing us, you know, we wouldn't be in the game. And I just, you know, and I, 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 I thank the God. I thank all oh, that. That's right. You know, you know, yo, Keith, you told the story. I believe first here, um, when you came last year, you said, you said that you wrote Let's Chill. And then because no, no beef, no nothing, Teddy had left with the tape. You had wrote Let's Chill for the wedding scene. Well, we, we, well, me, Bernabelle, and Teddy wrote Let's Chill for the wedding scene. That was supposed to be in New Jack City. New Jack City, the wedding, right. the wedding and, scene. And, and, not not uh, not Teddy for but Gene Griffin, you know, uh, decided he wanted to hold the song for Guy because I was actually supposed to sing that song in the wedding scene in New Jack City, you know what I mean? So that being said, I had Mario Van Peebles call me or, or the production call me and say, yo, you need to give us a song because you shoot tomorrow. So I had to go and write day then it so you know what I'm saying. So I be in the oh, thing. You know, there you go. With the wedding, go back to marry. Like so, it, so, man, he, he put it in the in the in the, in the place you want. Yo, let me tell you something, man. I'm just keep trying to find quieter places, for kids and everything here, yeah, chefs doing shit. Yo, chef. It's Key Sweat. What you know about Key Sweat? Hello, man. Hello, man. Yeah, talk to Key Sweat. Say what's up, my brother? Chef. Yo, chef, say what's up. You gotta come down to the islands, man. He's yeah, always cooked me some food, man. Yo, yo, <laughs> so Key, so people don't understand how ill that is for the wedding scene, and you gotta reckon you made for the wedding scene. And last minute, you made up. Here we go, telling me no again. Here you go, yeah, yeah. Keith, right. that's Ill, that's so ill to me. Me who I write songs and create. That's like when you just on your like in, like just you couldn't miss. Like what would like was the pen that fire at that moment? Man, you know, everything, you know, and for me, everything I touched at that moment hit, you know, it was like, it didn't, like, it seemed like I just couldn't miss, you know, and like I said, that was, uh, I mean, like, I, I just, at, when I grew up, I just loved music. I loved listening to the old Jays and, you know, everybody like that, the Burt, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, it was just like all the music that to help me keep it right the way I was you know, I'm trying to say Lilo Tom, the chief, all of that type of thing. Like just listening to all those type of people, the Commodores, uh, you know, New Birth. You know what I'm saying? All the people that I'm listening to. Back you in know what's crazy is my Uncle Dan used to work in Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And Uncle Dan told me all the time he worked with Keith Sweat in Wall Street. And I'm thinking he's full of shit, right? Right. And then I go hearing the story that you made the record just got paid. Friday night, because you worked right. in Wall Street. Is that right. why you came up with that? Well, yeah, you know, because, you know, you get off work, and, you know, just got paid. It's Friday night, you know what I mean? You know, but, you know, what, What you know, the, the crazy part about it is, you know, like I said, that record was written. It was supposed to go on my first album. And 
we had finished the first album, basically. We finished the first album. It was a done deal. So I said to to them, I said, yo, I got uh, another record that I want to put on the first album. And they said, no, nah, the album is complete. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. We're too late. So, you know, I saw Johnny Kemp, God rest his soul, walking down the street on 27th Street, on 28th Street, 7th Avenue, because I happened to be walking down. He was walking back. I said, yo, man, I did this record with Teddy. And, you you know, that's what Teddy, we were still doing a project, man. I said, Teddy's still over there in the projects because I was still living in 430 Grand Project. And I said, yo, man, go over there and uh, do the song. There's a song, I, you know, I'm supposed to go on my album that it didn't, I didn't make. It didn't make the album. So go and see what you know, whatever. So I didn't even know he cut the song until I got back off the tour. But I was on the yeah. So you had no Johnny Kent before... Be you had knew him before your first album even came out. You knew him right. as a singer. Yeah, He's I knew from that. Harlem, and you told him to go to Teddy's house. Teddy's still in the projects. Right. We, what I, projects you grew up in, Keith? Uh, Grand Projects. Oh, shit. Yeah, Keith. Yeah, Keith, you've been rich a long time, man. Let me tell you something. Do you ever think, you know what? So crazy to me, Keith, is I thought about the projects today. Right? And so I'm so blessed. And I was just thinking about my bedroom I grew up in, me and my brother. Like right now, the fucking light switch would probably be to my chest. <laughs> it, it, it was so fucking small. And I'm just so blessed to have experienced so many things. Like somebody like you, keep you've been out the projects 30, 40, 40 years. Like you've been like, and so do you ever reminisce about that? Or when you ever go back to New York, tinted window car, you pull up to the old neighborhood yeah, you know or something? Funny. You know what's funny, man? I end up going back to the projects and knocking on the door where I grew up and asked the lady, could I come in there and just feel it out? She said, hold up. Who are you? You can't sweat. I said, yeah, I just, I said, yo, I just, I actually did it, honestly. I said, yo, but I just want to come and reminisce for one second. You know what I mean? She let me in. She let me, you know, go. because sometimes I, I feel it's necessary to go back and and, and, and tap in where you came from so you, so you can appreciate where you are. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't do that. I think a lot of us that have success, we don't revisit where we came from. So it's kind of hard to appreciate where we are or we take for granted where we are and forget about all the things we had to go through and to get where we are. So for me, I think that's why I, I'm able to, I, I stayed in the game and I try to throw that on my kids as well to, to make them realize that, you know, it wasn't always glitter, glitter and gold. You know what I'm saying? It, it's basically, it was a way I paid for them to have the they have and they shouldn't take it for granted and you know what I'm saying and be blessed. And that, and that's and that's hard to do because we try our best not to spoil them, but they spoil you. And right. they didn't uh you know what I'm saying? They didn't have you know what I'm saying no matter what we do or what we tell them or we take them to the cousin's house to steal it, it it just doesn't transcend. It doesn't like and we became successful not just as entertainers, anybody that's black and brown became successful because we were challenged. And everybody said, you know what, I'm gonna make it up out of this shit, I'm gonna buy my own house, I'm right. gonna do whatever. The ones that did do it. Right. There's other people who feel like, yo, I'm gonna be in the projects, I'm gonna take welfare forever, I don't care, you know. They can't see past the invisible bars. But the ones that did make it and got a career or whatever, it's because everything that was thrown at us, we still fought through it right. to survive and go get it. Right. And so with our kids, you know, that's another conversation. Like, we, you know, they've been living in mansions their whole life. They've been living, you know what I mean? And we try to make them believe, right. like, yo, appreciate this or whatever. But it's, it's been my experience that, and I'm going to still keep giving my kids everything the fuck they want. Right. But 
it's, it's almost like I don't think they could ever feel what we felt. And I, I don't know right, if that's right. a good thing. And that, that's, that's a bad and a good thing. It's good that you're able to give your kids everything you, you work hard for. The bad thing is they'll never know the value of what it took to get there. And that's the bad part about it. So everything they got, they, they take it for granted because they didn't work to get it. You know, you know, nine times out of 10, when you get something that you don't work for, you don't appreciate it as much as you do when you work for it. And how, how most things in life are. So, I mean, like, I agree with you. I would never not stop getting, I would never not give my kids, or try my kids the thing that they want or desire life within reason. You know what I'm trying to say? But, uh, I mean, because that's the point of, you know what I'm saying, to be able to nourish them, uh, give them the things they want, bring them up the right way. Hopefully they make you proud when they get older. And, you know, you know and so far mine has made me very proud, so I don't have any regrets. <laughs> mm. Mm. You know, Keith, the women love you. I'm on here every night. None of these women tell me, Joe, blow me a kiss. Joe, give me, tell Keith I want to date. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something. I had, and, 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 and girls, I, I don't want to blow y'all because I'm, I I'm not for sure y'all married. I see. I'm in the um, Waldorf Astoria in LA. I'm talking to Johnny Gill. He got the three piece suit on. He got the fly shoes. He got the. Best. And they come up to him and say, Can I go on a date with you? Can, can, can I go? Can, can I, and I'm like sitting there like, Motherfucker, they looking at me like I'm some chop meat. Yeah. Right? Like, I ain't icy and I ain't fly. Right. But it's something about the R&B singers that the woman just, like, fucking come at you. Like, what is it? Man, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. Johnny Gill got a little more than, Johnny Gill can speak about that more than that guy. He got more swagger than me, baby. I ain't, you know, that's JG. He tell girls to put the red dress. I ain't never told no one to put on the red dress on. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I would have been, I would have been feeling weird if I was simply. Y'all got LSG, and then he's bought a new edition. Like, wh what was he thinking? Like, I gotta get him back on here. Like, he was like, you know, he called me. He called me after the battle, Johnny Gill. He was like, Yo, Joe, what's up? I said, Man, I don't know if you are, uh, if you want to hear what I got to say. <laughs> Like I said, like I said, like I said, man, like I said, due to the fact of the time allotted to put it all together, uh, B and my stuff, we did a phenomenal job, you know, because we tried to just make it work, I think. And, uh, you know, and I see somebody said me and Cassidy have a beef. No, me and Cassidy did not have a beef. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be laughing at some of the comments. Like, you know, I'm like, I, I like I like having fun. People don't understand. I wish people knew my personality. You know, they they would know that. Yeah, but they also gotta know this is how many years you've been doing this, uh, Keith. Over thirty, man. Over thirty years you've been doing this. This is your brand. This is your your life. This is you can't fucking play. Cashing to get the fucking record right. Like <laughs> like this shit. They don't they don't want to see Fat Joe in the verses. Yeah, because like, I go. Nah, we can't play. You know why? Because not just you or Bobby. Anybody who goes up in the verses, they got fans right. that been riding with them for 25, 30, 40 years. And been, every time they argue who's the best singer, who's the best this, they've been supporting. And then when you get up there, you know you you got to rap for them guys. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And so we can't let no glitches, no bullshit go through. And, and like I told you, Cassidy, he's one of the best DJs in the world. There's no question about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But we got to protect our shit. Because right. that day goes, Cassidy goes to DJ, and then you still keep swag. Right, right, right. And that's true. And that's very true. You know, like I said, you know, like I'm just happy that we were able to pull it off. And I, I, I'm happy, like, like I, I, I laugh at some of the comments. You know, like, 
I'm not one to just look at comments. I just like I just laugh at some of them, and you know, like I said, because you know what I'm saying. It, 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 it it's amusing, and you know, I I choose to be in the game, in the game, right? So you take the bad with the good. You know what I'm saying, I, and that's why I laugh at a lot of things. You know what I'm saying with the comments. You know what I'm saying. My personality. I'm a funny guy. If you're around me, I'm gonna entertain you the whole night long. Like like you. It, it was funny because in the very beginning of the show i just thought we were we were just laid back we were chilling you know we was laid back and the second half you know you know me joe i'm like i'm I, I, i'm full of energy i'm like hold up man i'm sitting down and the whole uh, the whole but that's not me i ain't sitting down no more i told bob man we're gonna have to get up i'm not sitting down no more man i ain't sitting in no more chairs i got to get up and be me i gotta you know i gotta have fun so that's <laughs> Shout out my brother Breon Prescott. Shout out to Melba Moore, the living legend. She sends you a love. Yeah, uh, everybody tuned in, you know? Yeah, Melba, Melba. How you doing, baby? And she active. I got I to gotta respect her because in the social media world, at least through COVID, Melba Moore, she been active on the air. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to stay with the times. And she be with the times. But so, you know. I still want to say this, man, about B. Like, I'm going to say this. That brother has been through so much. And, like, I'm saying this as a friend, as a fan and whatever. He's been through so much. And, like, he he has to be a very strong individual for him to have gone through as much. Because, you know, most of us go through things, right? We go through them one, two years and then maybe three years and then, something else maybe four years after that. He was getting hit with things back to back to back to back to back to back to back. So we gotta be thankful that Bobby's even here with us, bro. That's the he, that's the realest shit. Right. So for 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 when I look at him, I look at him as a man who has overcame so many adversities that, you know, for me, I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it, and I, I because I know, you know, I had, I, I have a, a strong tolerance level, but that's a hell of a tolerance level that 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 man has, and for him to be able to still smile, laugh, joke, play, have fun, enjoy life, knowing there's probably so much inside of him that's still messing with him. Like, that's a hell of an achievement. And, you know, and I will always love that, brother, because, like I tell you, you know, people don't know we're really, really family, but that's a hell of, of an achievement for him to even go through that. Like, after the verses, I went to the house. He cooked dinner and everything that at the table, and we talked and laughed and all that. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying I love him for what he's done for the culture. I love him for what he's done for R&B. You know, that's what it is for me. You know what I'm saying? And bottom line, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, flowers for Bobby Brown, man. Living legend, the king. He the king. You know, I have my arguments with people, you know what I'm saying, singers and all that. They're like, yo, Bobby was the king. Maybe you're too young to understand, but he was the king. And I, you know, and, he, like I said, <laughs> and, and, and it ain't about how many records you got. It's about how you change the game. How many people can you change how the R&B game is? You know for a fact, if you you can count on your hands how many people change the change. When I say change the game, how the game is looked at, at how the R&B game is looked at. There ain't a cultural, whole cultural moments. We call them cultural right. influence, like shit to change the whole shit. Yeah, you know, so therefore... When hands down, that man changed our game or how people or, or or how people look at it and how people see it. So I mean, when you know when they say he's the king over me, I'm not. Hey, I ain't got no. You ain't got no argument from me. <laughs> you know. Hey, I'm good. You ain't got no argument for me. I'm just happy that we're able to do. do one, one thing it. about Keith Sweat that is knowledgeable that everybody knows is that. You're a serious businessman. Right. You handle your business. You're one of the rare, because you know what happens, man? These these labels, these record labels and this shit, they take, 
Yo, this is the only business, Keith, where if you want to be a basketball player, you got to go to college, you got to grow up a certain way, stay out of the trouble. Football player, this is the only business. Look, you mentioned shit like, no disrespect, Gene Griffin. And, you know, if anybody knows who these names are, these are legendary. This is the type of people yeah. we've been dealing with in this game. And, and then we've been dealing with these labels that to me are predators. They take young black talented kids that know no better. We think they save our lives. They throw us a couple of dollars and they use us so they don't need us no more. Throw us in the street. Mm -hmm. And so um, that in itself, you know, with that right there, they couldn't play that shit with Keith Sweat. Right. They couldn't, and how do you get so intelligent because, you know, I know that your business has always been straight. You've always been a sharp businessman. Um, how do you get like that? I mean, you know that, you know, that most people say, like, uh, the music business is a business, you know? And if you look at it, any, it's cool to have fun. It's cool to enjoy. It's cool to uh, uh, make money in the game, but it's still a business. At the end of the day, it's still a business like any other business. And you got to conduct it and handle it like it's a business. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you cannot sit up there. I mean, cause it, 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 people will take away from it. Like anything, if you allow somebody to take something from you, they will. You understand what I'm saying? So, I mean, you just have to be smart enough to not, because they will, uh, 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 throw all the glitter and the glam, uh, uh, all the everything at you and clog your vision and you know fog you up real good fog you up real good and say hey man you're gonna be this you're gonna be this you're gonna have all of this while they stealing your money taking your money whatever so you got to be smart enough to understand like i think know, all the time in this business i never got robbed by a guy with a ski mask and a gun i always got robbed by guys with bow ties and suits, right. with smiles, right. and and they get around you, and you think because they like us, let's just say black and brown, mm. um, and all the time they're talking to you, they're picking your brain to find out what you don't know and how they can steal that from you. Right, it's fucked up. Right, but it's always the people closest to get you. You know what I mean? Because they know how you move, they know where you move. You know what I mean? So it's always people closest to you. So when things happen, you know it's probably somebody that was close to you that set you up. <laughs> was, what's crazy, um, betrayal, I tell people all the time, betrayal. Right? You can build the biggest wall, the biggest mansion, go to the firmest place, but it's one emotion that can always hurt you no matter where you at is that betrayal. Whether right. in a relationship, like you, there you go, you, there you go, tell me, you say, I know you're cheating on me. <laughs> Tell me it's a lie. Yo, that betrayal right. hits that heart. Yeah. They... And uh, <laughs> that betrayal hits the heart. But, um, yo, Keith, I see everybody saying, I see you in Indiana. I see you over here. I see, I guess COVID over. You in them streets again, huh? Yeah, I'm on tour again. You know, I'm in Indiana, Indianapolis. I got a bunch of shows coming up. I just, uh, I was in uh, Dallas last week. You know what I'm saying? Before I ended. Don't that show start, because I ain't no bullshit. I'm trying to fly to Indiana, because I know it's you, Stephanie Mills. Yeah. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about flying in that motherfucker. <laughs> is, that, is that a nighttime yeah. show or a daytime show? The nighttime show. It's the Black Expo. Black Expo, yeah. So, That's you, Johnny Kill, Stephanie Mills, somebody else, right? There's a few other people. I forget who was on the show. I can't. I forget who else was on that show, man. I forget. <laughs> but it's gonna be a good show, man. I can't wait. I can't wait. So, yeah, I do that. The Black Expo. Uh, I think it's seventeen thousand people, something like that. It's gonna be there. Hi, right, my brother. I love you, Keith. Man, nothing but love. Thank you for coming on here. You the light skin, Keith Sweat. You the step on stage, girl scream like I'm Keith. Yo. That, that must feel good when you step in a club and they play legend. Cause that's legendary. That that look, light skin Keith Sweat, you know Drake?
Drake, he run the game. He run the charts right now. Right, right. That, that is a big shout out, right? Just, I'm just saying. Like, yeah. vanity. And then, uh, but when step on stage, girl scream like I'm Keith with Biggie <laughs> on that shit, LL, like, that was, that's a shout out, huh? Yeah, that was a, uh... That was big, you know. You know, I think out of all the all the singers or the R and B singers, I'm the most named one of the most named singers. Ah! All the hip hop stuff, so that's a good thing. Woo! I made some kind of impact on the hip hop world. I think biggest impact. Let me tell you something. You the only, and it's I don't want to say it like that. It's just been a positive interview, but like, there's a reason why you're singing at the wedding in New Jack City. You always been like the hustlers. I don't want to say drug dealers, but yeah, you've been the street. The street slug you in a different way. Right, right, right. Like you could do with, with um Keith Sweat's album. You got the toughest guys in the world blasting that music out they call like it's the hardest shit in the world. Yeah, yeah. And so that you got that. That's why you in the scene of New Jack City at the shootout, the wedding. They're like, yo, we got Keith here? That's like the ultimate dream, drug dealer's dream. You yeah. got Keith on that motherfucker. Yeah, it was kind of dope. Yeah, it was dope when it came out. Because, you know, when my music came out, I was like, I'm like, you playing my joint? They playing my joint? They playing my joint? It was crazy. It was crazy. You know, so, you know. And, that let, and let me tell you something. Um, what you doing now? Cause you said something real quick, but we didn't touch it. You doing a TV show with Marcus Houston or a, a movie? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a musical coming on TV. It's called Howard High. So we were shooting that in LA when I, when and someone caught COVID and they had to shut down for eight days or two days. So uh, you know, once they pick back up, they're picking back up, and then I got to go out back out there and finish shooting my scenes as well. So I'm playing the school teacher. Marcus Houston playing the school teacher for another team. So, you know, it's all good. You know, I'm trying to get my acting skills in. You know what I mean? I got to get my acting. I saw you. You had your, got your acting skills in. So I got to yeah, yeah, get it in, you know? <laughs> I love you, my brother. Be good, all right? Thank you so much. All uh, right. Thank you for having me on your show, baby. Appreciate you, boy. Right, my brother. <laughs> Tell you, man. All right. All right. Keep sweat. There you go. Telling me no again. There you go. Keith Sweat is also one of the only singers that you sing his shit like you can sing it. All right, all right, Dennis, sir. It's like, that's a joker moment, shooting the TV show with Marcus Houston. You know what I'm saying? That's a joker moment. And, uh, and Keith, you know, I sing his shit like I can sing it. Check this out, y'all. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. Meaning, if you went through some shit in life and your so-called friends, your family, weren't there for you, when you needed them, they're not really your peoples like that. Raul was good. Put God first in good and bad times. I am a God-fearing man. I love God. I would not be here if it wasn't for God. I want to thank Keep sweat for coming to the big, 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 big show. And I'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock, but we'll talk some more real. Big show, the biggest. 16 one, 16 mil Right now OG say Yo him can't chill No sir Buru G say money haunted And suicide say ya poverty Him won't kill Money With the bandy grind from night till morning Money Ghost them a eat just till we start win Mineral we gone choke off in Wash off the crosses